Hey everyone, it's Alexander the Real Mr. Robinson. Welcome to the channel. And we are coming near the end of the Godzilla watch alongs. Uh, we only have 10 more movies left, meaning only five weeks left. So it's going to be, yeah, can't believe we're already at this point. We are at uh, the, we are all, we're at, after this movie, we will be halfway through the Millennium series. Uh, and this movie right here is the best film in the Millennium series, Godzilla, Mothra, King Ghidorah, Giant Monsters, All Out Attack. And uh, we're just going to get started. I've seen a lot of you are in the chat at the moment. I want to welcome you all right here. Looks like we got an excellent stream status. Uh, I noticed really briefly that uh, Razor Bike, you have not seen Die Hard, Mad Max, or Terminator 2. And for that, uh, that's... That's unfortunate. That's very unfortunate, especially Terminator 2. But, uh, yeah, we are uh, going to hop into this soon. Uh, yeah, just welcome everyone uh, in the chat. I only see three people right now. It says four, but I only see Razorbike, Arflow, and uh, where are you? Spiders Prime. Yeah, this is the best film in the Millennium series, undoubtedly. Because the last one, uh, yeah, the last one was undoubtedly the worst film in the Millennium series. So what do you do when you need to bring life back into the Godzilla series? You get the man who made Gamera better than Godzilla at one point. So yeah, this film's directed by Shutsuke Kaneko, who made the excellent Heisei Gamera trilogy. And uh, you knew it was only a matter of time before they got, Toho actually got him for a Godzilla film. And uh I think everything's looking good. Uh, I one thing before I get started, I never know. I didn't plan this at all, but today is actually the seventy uh, fifth anniversary of the bombings of Hiroshima, uh, August fourth, nineteen forty five. I want to make sure I got that correctly. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's wrong. August 6th. Uh, I got, yeah. Some some reason Twitter was saying, like, it's the 75th anniversary of the bombing of Hiroshima. And uh, that's that obviously goes to show you can't trust Twitter at all. But, uh, yeah, so, but regardless, uh, the... We'll be doing the next film, Godzilla against Mechagodzilla, on that day. And I did not plan that at all. Um, but, uh, yeah, I just wanted to bring that up because I thought it was kind of a coincidence. And uh, we're just going to get into this right now. i got six people in total. And uh, so, once again, like, this is one of those Blu-rays where... Um, the TriStar logo pops up in front of the Toho logo. I had to check to make sure the Blu-ray was working. And uh, with that being said, not much else to elaborate on. So, sorry, I keep looking this way because my phone is really screwed up in terms of the char uh, terms of charging. Okay, I think it's good. Should not be paying attention to my phone while during this live stream. Uh, but anyway, I think we're all good. For those of you who are watching this movie in post, um, it is available to rent digitally. Um, and I next time I encourage you to watch these uh, live because, again, I, I encourage interaction with the chat. Oh, one thing. One little thing before we get started. I know I keep like saying, you know what? We're going to get started now. Oh, wait. Uh, this is the last thing. I swear. Um, I've decided to start up a uh, blog in terms of writing. I don't know how many people actually still use Tumblr nowadays, but I just decided to make a Tumblr account or I'm sorry, reboot my Tumblr account because I used to have one, but it kind of got abandoned. So decided to make a new one specifically for opinion pieces and just to uh, just to work up on my writing ability because there's a lot that I'd like to say in terms of movies and sometimes theme parks that I can't get around to on YouTube. So, uh, yeah, this Tumblr account will be the best place to uh, uh, see more stuff. 
at least in written form. All I have right on, all I have on there right now is just an introduction piece, but I'm hoping to write more within the next, within within the future. Uh, but anyway, uh, with all that being said, if y'all are ready, uh, I'm going to start playing the movie right now. Yeah, that horse. Justin Toner, you have not seen this movie. You are in for one of the best films in the Millennium... No, not one of the best of the Millennium series. <clears throat> this score is pretty haunting. So yeah, once again, that this is a um, this is another reboot which ignores everything but the 1954 film. Yeah, not a not so subtle jab at uh, Roland Emmerich's butchered abomination especially since uh Shutsuke Kaneko was very vocal about uh that movie let me see if I can pull up his quote um yeah I, I can't find a quote of him of what he actually said but he was very critical about the film But yeah, that um, what the admiral just um, mentioned right there, uh, ki would kind of back up my theory on how the beginning of Roland Emmerich's film would be part of this movie, yeah? where you never actually see the monster; you just see claws dig into it and the tail, uh, and uh, you could easily assume that that's Godzilla in this movie, yeah? cause. Um, because Zilla's never that destructive uh, later on, but that's not, but we're, yeah, I know there's Wikipedia, but I wanted to see if Shutsuke Kaneko, what Shutsuke Kaneko really said about it rather than just like Wikipedia. Well, she's dead. So is Bruce the shark in this movie? Because there's that famous Jaws. Dun, dun. I really wish they would take out these like title English title cards because this like title card for GMK is so cool. It is weird that these credits are just against the monster's skin. Yeah. 
Yep. Directed by Shutsuke Kaneko, the man who, as again, uh, made Gamera better than Godzilla at one point. Okay, there's the quote from Kaneko about Zilla. It is interesting that the U.S. version of Godzilla runs around trying to escape missiles. Americans seem unable... Americans seem unable to accept a creature that cannot be put down by their own arms. BS Digital Q. Does that stand for bullshit? I mean, to bring up the Jaws parable again. Um, even though Jaws was just a movie, uh, tourism in Martha's Vineyard definitely increased. That was a quick uh, change in tone. So I don't know how many people know this, but that the old man that keeps popping up in this movie, yeah? like like just standing there in the woods, like Jason Voorhees, uh, uh, that is uh, the same actor who. Um, was the neighbor the neighbor in uh all monsters attack i say um oh the toy maker and he played doctor who in king kong escapes so that's a little bit of neat bit of trivia for there. You know, these are supposed to be a bunch of bikers, but those horns uh, definitely do not leave, would not leave you intimidated. Razor bike, razor bike. I, I was kidding about the bullshit thing. Yeah, it's just a bunch of douchebag bikers. Yeah, I really don't get a good view of Baragon there. But, uh... It's good to see Baragon after who knows how long.
Okay, look, I know I'm growing out my hair too, uh, but I don't have a choice because I'm not risking my life to go out to get my hair cut. But that dude, like, that dude's got to at least control that hair. Oh yeah, after the, like, really out there science fiction weapons in the last movie, it is nice to get a Godzilla movie with weapons that are a little more conventional. Even if there's a strong fantasy element with this one. Okay, one thing one thing I don't like about Shutsuke Kaneko, uh, this is a problem he's inherited since Gamera 3, is that he loves to, much like how J.J. Abrams loves to abuse uh, lens flares for his non-Star Wars films, because I think he toned back with Star Wars, uh, Kaneko loves to like have the camera just digitally shake constantly, yeah? It gets a little obnoxious. Alright, that looks good. You know what? One thing that I had an issue with uh, earlier, when I, like, in the early days I saw this movie, is, um, is how, um, uh, is how, like, the Guardian Monsters, um, like, they're supposed to protect Japan. But they flat out murder um, a bunch of people. But the see see what they just did there, like did they like if they just like straight up killed a dog? It's like man, fuck these dudes. Huh? Oh no, the dog's still alive. Huh? Okay, I hope they didn't, like, I hope they didn't straight up kill the dog. Yeah, mo yeah. Yeah, Mothra just went full Jaws. It would have been hilarious if um, that that dog was just riding on top of Mothra's head. Like that that would have been that would have been fun.
No, I think. I mean, our flow says. I mean, they're about to definitely kill the dog had Mothra not killed them. Huh? Um, but we don't see the dog survive. Huh? Like, does it swim back to shore? Or at least I don't remember that part. Huh? Razor Bike says we do see the dog survive. I I hope so. I mean I I mean this okay, I'll be honest, like as much as I love this movie, this is one that I actually find myself rewatching not as often as I should, mainly because uh the Blu-ray the subtitles are based off of the international dub and the dub, which wouldn't be a problem if the dub didn't commit uh, a couple of the most heinous crimes like towards what this movie's intent was. Hey, the dog lived. He is a good boy. All right, so... There we go. It is an interesting concept how this takes place in a reality where like people just kind of forgotten Godzilla and he's just become this urban legend that people make fun of or just kind of disregard as a legend until he actually shows up. Because the like the younger people don't pay any attention to this, but the older people definitely the older people who are alive during Godzilla's rampage definitely uh, take it seriously. See, right there. Like, that guy doesn't really believe that Godzilla will return or that he even exists.
Yeah, uh, this actor is uh, Hideo Amamoto. And he actually died two years after... Like, he died two years after this movie came out. Huh? Yeah, this is another thing that um, kind of, it took a while for me to actually warm up to this movie uh, when I first saw it. Just because we're all used to King Ghidorah being the villain. And, uh, like, I watched this movie the worst way possible for the first time. I watched it, like, as an, as an ignorant 11-year-old. Um, uh, I just watched all the monster scenes uh, without any context at all. And uh, I was confused the whole time uh, and even angry at why Mothra was aiding King Ghidorah. And uh, it just... It, it bugged me. Uh, like, like, it bugged me so much. Uh, but then it took me a while... To um, it took me a while to warm up to this movie and um, like what it was actually about, and to the point where I'm just like, okay, like I would still prefer Ghidorah was the bad guy, but um, given the context of this story, uh, I'll let it slide. Once again, the younger generation does not take Godzilla seriously. This is a... Like, this entire sequence and what ends up coming down later down... This entire sequence and what ends up happening later down the line is a great parallel to um, what happens in... What happened in the original Godzilla. Now, I imagine they built this set. To... Huh. Ah, funny. P jokes. Uh, anyway, um, I imagine that they built that set on a, um, on a, um, moving platform and just shook it around uh, to simulate an earthquake. Uh, and that shot right there, where you see the guy looking out the window and then Godzilla steps on the building, I imagine... That had to be like a tiny projector or a tiny monitor on um, on the wind to project the window, which would explain why. I mean, it's just I'm just trying to look into the filmmaking of this film. Um, Godzilla McCollum 2000. Have I seen? Have I seen Shin Godzilla? Yes, and it is brilliant. One of the best movies of the last decade.
Okay. If, sorry if I'm not talking a whole lot. I'm just like, I'm really invested in what's going on right now. Partially because sometimes like it's a little hard to wrap my mind around the mythology of this film. Especially with the whole like Godzilla being consumed by spirits. Hey, this guy, huh? Uh, I don't know the name of this actor. But he appeared in uh, the three Gamera films that Kaneko directed. And it's like he was, um, he was the main character's assistant in Guardian of the Universe. He had a very tiny role in um, Attack of Legion. And then... He came back in a slightly bigger role in um, Revenge of Iris. So yeah, here he is in a very small role in GMK. I, you know, I never put it together um, that... Um, Michael Doherty's decision to put to freeze Ghidorah in ice in King of the Monsters probably came for this movie. I mean, there's another sequence. There's another moment in this movie that's very reminiscent of um, that would appear later in King of the Monsters. So, so we will uh, get to that moment when we get to it. Oh, there's the girl that survived the um, survived that Godzilla attack. Okay, that is a obviously a CGI boat on an obvious CGI water uh, front and ooh or maybe, maybe that's a real ship that they composited into a fake water uh, ocean landscape but either way it doesn't look good <laughs> um, you know for the longest time I thought Shinji Higuchi did the special effects for this film just because I assumed since he did the special effects for all three Gamera films that Kaneko directed, that he'd bring in Shitsuke Kaneko. No, that Shitsuke Kaneko would bring Shinji Higuchi on for this movie, but uh, nope, we'll have to wait until... Two he'd have to wait until 2016 to make a Godzilla movie, and it would get him a Japanese Oscar. The mountains and the rivers and the forests and things. 
Uh, that's the downfall of um, dub titles. Okay, I mean, because the subtitles are based off the dub, I wonder if what she said about um, Asian soldiers, Americans, and everyone affected by nuclear bombs basically formed into one. Uh, I wonder if that's actually in the Japanese translation. Because I'd always thought it was the Japanese soldiers that, um, the vengeful Japanese soldiers that died that consumed Godzilla's corpse. Oh yeah, Justin Toner, um, Shin Godzilla was nominated for several Japanese Academy Awards and won a majority of the awards, including Best Picture in Japan, which is the only Godzilla film to ever do that. Um, and only the second Godzilla film to even be nominated in that category. You know, I mean, this is something that's called, I believe this is something that's called a conflict of interest where she's trying to, she's seemingly trying to exploit her father to get like news stories or tidbits on Godzilla. Except here, except here, she's not as like egotistical or just irritating as um, no, I, I mean, not as irritating. Would assume that she is irritating, but she's nowhere near Audrey and Roland Emmerich's thing. Wow, floppy disk. It goes to show you how dated this movie is. Yeah, I'm not... I'm not a fan of the digital camera shaking. I know it's supposed to be an earthquake, but... It's, it's too much. <laughs> Like, I feel like, um, personally, I do feel like that um, Shogo Tomiyama should have said, Kaneko, you can have free reign, but you can't do these digital camera shakes. Uh, but there's, anyway, there's Baragon. That's a good compositing shot between, like, the humans and 
Baragon. By the way, one of my favorites, um, it should be noted that Baragon uh, is the first monster in the Godzilla series. This, this version of Baragon is the first monster in the Godzilla series to be played by uh, a suit actress. Because uh, Baragon beforehand was played by Hado Nakajima in both Frankenstein vs. Baragon and Destroy All Monsters. Uh, because, you know... Baragon was in like one scene without Godzilla, so of course they had to um they had to have Nakajima play Baragon. But one of my favorite clips on uh, the internet is when the suit actress is playing Baragon during behind in behind the scenes footage. And whenever she's acting like she's roaring, um you could just um hear the actress going ah, ah. I mean it's always funny when um, you see behind the scenes footage of Godzilla movies and you hear the actors inside just like making noises to to simulate their roars like there's other behind the scenes footage of GMK where um, the suit actor who plays King Ghidorah is doing the same thing. But he has, I think he has to do it uh, more frequently because of the three heads. Like, he just goes, rah, rah, rah. Like, it, it's just really funny. There's Godzilla in what is my favorite, like, my favorite design of the Millennium Series. And definitely the scariest looking Godzilla until Shin Godzilla came out. Memories of the Ash of Death towards a future with no nuclear weapons. I'm sorry, I have to. <laughs> yeah, I, I would... I wouldn't be surprised if... Um, I know this is a lot of people's favorite... One of fav people's favorite Godzilla movies. But uh, I would not be surprised if GMK was Michael Doherty's favorite or one of his favorites. Because there's definitely a lot that he borrowed... From this film. Yeah, there's a lot of good compositing shots. In terms of blurring the lines between what's a miniature and what's re what's an actual set with people. Oh yeah, then this scene here, like it's very reminiscent of the first film where there's that um, Odo Island native that survived Godzilla's attack on the ship only for Godzilla to basically kill him on Odo Island. And this is very reminiscent of that where it's almost like this girl survived Godzilla that first time. She's totally helpless, uh, and then at a point where she just is like, wow, I survived. I can't believe it. That was so close. And then this happens, uh, where Godzilla just ends up killing her anyway.
yeah, that that woman that screamed Godzilla's only a legend, uh, despite the fact that Godzilla's right outside the store. I imagine if she died, no, if she if she lived on, she would be the kind of person that would look at coronavirus as a hoax. But no, she had to scream the loudest and get Godzilla's attention. And be responsible for the deaths of all those people. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, here's another thing about this Godzilla. Like, in the last two movies, he was always the lesser of two evils, but never the protagonist. This movie, it's very clear that he's evil. Like, like, there's no denying that this Godzilla is the bad guy. Yeah, that's horrifying. Yeah, that, that shot right there with Godzilla at the power plant, that, like, the coloring on, like, again, it's a great compositing shot because Godzilla doesn't look like he's a different color than the, than the power plant that's real. Again, I feel like if um, Shinji Higuchi had did, done the special effects for this film, there probably would have been a lot more creative special effects shots. It's like, don't mind me. You y'all aren't being pricks, so I'm not gonna kill you. <laughs> it's scary, but quite cute, really. It, that that's kind of Baragon's whole life, really. Like people just think Baragon's now cute. Huh? But uh, another thing that should be, um worth noting is um oh yeah there's Godzilla again he's gonna knock down a whole mountain and kill those people but the uh the original monster roster for this film was not Godzilla Mothra Ghidorah and Baragon like, originally Varen was supposed to be in Mothra's place, and Anguirus was supposed to be in Ghidorah's place. It, which, honestly, if those three monsters... If those monsters had been the movie besides... If it had been Godzilla, Varen, Anguirus, and Baragon, instead of Godzilla, Mothra, Ghidorah, and Baragon, then I probably wouldn't have been as taken back at the idea of Ghidorah being a good guy. 
Uh, but the only reason that uh, Varen and Angiris were were replaced with Mothra and Ghidorah was just to bring in more money, because Mothra and Ghidorah are box office guarantees when it comes to a Godzilla movie. Um, I mean, at least in a, terms of a Japanese Godzilla movie prior to the anime trilogy. But, um, but yeah, I think, I wonder, you wonder how this movie would have been if it was Varen and Angiris rather than, um, Mothra and, Ver and Ghidorah. They didn't outsmart you. They just had a helicopter. So they beat you to it. There's another shot of Godzilla falling in a hole. It's been a while since we've had that happen to him. Yeah, I I would think the only reason Baragon stayed as opposed to Angiris, because Angiris is more popular in the United States and at least a more recognizable monster, even when he's appeared in more movies than Baragon. But I think uh, what people have told me is that Baragon is actually more popular in Japan than Angiris is. So that's why... So that's why, out of the original monster roster, Baragon stayed. Yeah, that's... Like, Godzilla is vicious in this movie. Like, this Godzilla... Like, the blank gray eyes, the snar... The huge oversized fangs and the snarls. And just, like, kicking Baragon into the dirt. I feel sorry that Baragon, like, like, not only is Baragon not featured in the film's title, but he doesn't even take part in the final battle. And Baragon doesn't really, I mean, the point of this movie is that Godzilla is supposed to be the most powerful monster, which is why Mothra and Ghidorah are were reduced in this film in terms of like, because normally King Ghidorah towers over Godzilla, but as you'll see later on, Ghidorah is smaller than Godzilla in this movie. And Shutsuke Kaneko wanted Godzilla to be the most powerful creature in the film. Oh, those poor bastards. Yes, let's run towards the monsters. Um, yeah, uh, Shitsuke Kaneko's compromise with replacing Varen and Angiris with Mothra and, Bar and Ghidorah was that um, uh, he they be smaller monsters.
I used to have a camera like that. Like, again, goes to show you how dated this movie is, uh, being at 2000, since it's 2001. Yeah, why would you go inside the building? Like, wh why? It's like, if I see Godzilla approaching, I am not going inside the building where I have a high chance of being trapped. I am running back the way I came, down that road. I am never looking back. And see right there, if it wasn't for... I'm going to say dumb luck. Uh, yeah, if it wasn't for dumb luck, uh, those two would have been dead. Speaking of dead, uh, it is... we're Oh, we're actually at 52 minutes in. So we're about halfway through. A little more than halfway through the movie. And uh, Baragon's already dead. And Ghidorah is still frozen in ice. And Mothra has yet to appear again. So going back to watching this movie out of context for the first time. Um, I just thought this was a senile old man. Um, who was just so senile, so senile and crazy. That he just decided to release King Ghidorah. From hit from a slumber. Well, yeah, two more guardian monsters at least. So she got knocked out unconscious and all she has is just a wrapping around her head. There's Mothra's cocoon. There's a shot straight out of Mothra versus Godzilla, except it's a cocoon instead of an egg. Um, okay, somebody in the chat said Yuri's the April O'Neil. Uh, I she's I feel like she's more like the Lois Lane. Um. Well, I mean, I guess April Neal in the sense that she's a camera, she, that she's an on-camera host or journalist. But for some reason, maybe I just haven't watched enough Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but uh, Lois always seemed more willing to go out there for the story than April did. Huh? And that's what Yuri's really doing right now. That lizard picked on the wrong guy here. Um, I assume that's the uh, dub titles talking and not the actual Japanese language.
Man, her boss, uh, <laughs> just the way he acted right there. If he just cut his hair and had um, a mustache, he could just be Mr. Taco from King Kong vs. Godzilla. Razor Vike says, I love how the long-haired dude just appears out of nowhere. I mean, he is the boss, so he's supposed to be around. <laughs> and she is far from the action right now. She's going to have to get an E.T. bike to get there quickly. Man, that is one, um, that's some Alex Jones type energy, uh, when it comes to hosting a network show or at least a TV news program, except minus the crazy ass conspiracy theories. Now that pilot, I wonder if that's um, Shinoda, the actor who played Shinoda in Godzilla 2000. Because it sounded like him, and I, like, just from, based on the eyes, it looked like him. Yeah, hope nobody was home. I could be dead wrong with, um, with that uh, being the same actor. See, another thing that kind of threw me off about, like, watching this movie out of context is that all the music and the way they build up Ghidorah's awakening, it makes him sound sinister. So I think that just lended to the confusion on why I thought, why I was so confused that they were treating Ghidorah as the hero. So is this Mothra a werewolf or a were-moth since the full moon is out? Okay, so they do acknowledge um, Serizawa and the Oxygen Destroyer.
Oh, what did she do now? Okay, I wonder if that's actually what he says in the original Japanese language. Um, when that one uh, officer says, we'll pr send some troops to protect her, and then the admiral says, arrest her. There's Mothra. And the girl on the left there um, with the shorter hair is the actress that played Ayana in uh, Gamera 3, yeah? So yeah, another uh, actor from the Gamma series that Kaneko brought over into this movie, even if it's for a cameo. Again, Ghidorah's arrival and his music sounds sinister. So, like, it just, it's confusing why they would, I guess the music's trying to convey a more fantastical uh, element, but I don't know. This is my favorite line in the dub. What the hell's going on? It's like a monster convention here. I mean, it's not pretty hard. At this point, it's not pretty hard to mix up Godzilla with a giant moth and a golden three headed dragon. We're back in Yokohama. Oh, there's one moment coming up involving the dub and the dub titles, which is like the biggest crime that the dub has ever committed to this movie. Um, I'm not sure when it's coming up, but I'll, I'll, I'll point it out when it pops up. If you've seen this movie or know this movie inside out, you'll probably know what this moment is. Oh, the glasses are off. Oh, this moment. This moment right here pisses me off so much. Yes, good luck, everyone. You're going to die. Which... It's so that pisses me off so much because the uh, uh, the guy that was speaking saying good luck everyone, he's actually supposed to be speaking in a different language. I th I don't know for sure. I think it's Chinese or some other language. But anyway, the girl is pretty much translating for him, um, and yelling to the self defense forces saying, "He's saying good luck," which that plays into um what Honda was a was big on in terms of his films the like like the unity of working together a universal cooperation in the face of dangers like this huh? 
So the fact that the dubbers decided to make it like some sort of dark com comedic moment is so insulting. That's the main reason why I don't watch this movie on Blu-ray as much as I'd like to. Unless I got my hands on like proper subtitles for this movie, um, that one moment just keeps me from... That one moment keeps me from watching this movie more often than I do with some of the others. Huh? Which is a shame because this is this is really one of the, the best Godzilla movies out there. Mothra is tiny. Like, and she's coming in pretty slowly. Like, Godzilla could easily just blast her with his atomic breath, but no. There's a cool shot there. Like, I think it's hard to tell from a distance, but that looked like a CGI Godzilla in the middle of Yokohama. There's something Mothra has never been able to do beforehand. Um, another thing to note, um, I don't know... If, um, I don't know if we pass them or if they're popping, if they're going to pop up later, but, um, there are two random Japanese self-defense forces. Yeah. Two Japanese self-defense force officers are played by Koichi Kawakita, the special effects director for, uh, six out of the seven Heisei films and Masaki Tezuka, who directed Megagiris and the two Kiryu films, so I don't know if they're if they're gonna pop up later on or they um if they already happened if they already showed up. But it's kinda like how like some directors will do that. They'll bring in other directors um as cameos. Like I know in The Last Jedi, um in The Last Jedi, Edgar Wright and Gareth Edwards uh show up as resistance fighters. Okay, that was... That was a dick move by Mothra. Like, she just flew right into the building. She... Mothra flew... Mothra flew right into... Like, towards the building. And, um... Allowed those soldiers to get killed. Razorbike says we already passed it. It's before Godzilla shows up at the meeting. Oh, okay. Yeah, as much as, like, as much as I was taken back by the fact of Ghidorah being a good guy in this movie, I love this design of Ghidorah. Like, um, another production story is that the, the, the person who designed all the monster suits... He was so disappointed that Varen was not um, featured in the movie that he had to, Varen had to be replaced. Um, I don't I don't think it's confirmed which monster replaced who. 
And to be honest, I don't think it matters. But um, the suit designer put in bits of Varen, uh, incorporated bits of Varen into Ghidorah's design, which I think is pretty cool. It is weird seeing Ghidorah with his wings retracted. And the way he appears, you'd have to buy into the fact that an armless three-headed dragon bur burrowed its way underground. Which I call bullshit on. Y'all get out of the way. Never really noticed how uh, huge Godzilla's feet are. So it must be like, and again, watching this movie out of context, like I was rooting for Godzilla in this moment. Like obviously nowadays, it's like I can't root for Godzilla because he's the villain. But, like, I was rooting for Godzilla and was confused why he knocked Mothra out of the way. Because I assumed Mothra was coming in to, um, to help Godzilla with Ghidorah. But, um, no, we'd have to wait until 2019 to see that, huh? This music is so good. Huh? It, considering how tiny Mothra is in this film, it's amazing that she survived that. So, I guess going back to... Um, okay, so... Here's the, here's the history behind, um, I, I said it doesn't matter which monster replaced who, but, um, here's what, here's the background of the original concept for this film. This is all according to Toho Kingdom. Reportedly, Kaneko agreed, okay, um, the, the storyline by Shutsuke Kaneko was his original pitch for the Guardian Monster script. The idea was approved by Shogo Tomiyama. But to Tomiyama's surprise, his, super his superiors requested changes to the concept. Hang on, this moment. Like, th this soldier is just like, ah, oh, hell. Like, he just kind of accepts his fate that Godzilla's going to, um, kill him. And in one blast with his, just like in the return of Godzilla, one blast of his atomic breath takes out nearly all of the self-defense forces. Anyway, um, uh, Shogo Tomiyama was actually all for this idea, but his superiors, uh, request that Mothra and Ghidorah would be in it because they're more bankable. And, uh, it says, reportedly, Kaneko agreed after discussing the situation with some of his friends and discovering that most of them weren't familiar with the monsters he was proposing. His compromise, though, was to still include Baragon in the final treatment. Thus, Varen and Angiris were replaced by Mothra and King Ghidorah, respectively. So, Varen repla so Mothra replaced Varen, and Angiris replaced King Ghidorah. And this moment here, like... Another moment that um, Doherty would pull.
pull from King of the Monsters, uh, where where Mothra is killed, but sacrifices herself to help the other monster. Except Godzilla and Ghidorah are just swapped. Uh. Hey, there's the Warner Brothers logo. Some foreshadowing right there. Obviously, like, this movie came out in 2001, 13 years before, um, before, um, the original, the Gareth Edwards Godzilla. So there was no way they'd know that Warner Brothers would be distributing, uh, the new American films. And yeah, this part here, like, Made me so mad. Again, watching this movie out of context as a dumb 11-year-old. I was so mad uh, to see that Mothra sacrificed herself and supercharged King Ghidorah. It's like, no, you're helping the enemy. Yeah, this is this is the only movie to actually make a distinction between it's not much of a distinction, but a distinction between just plain Ghidorah and King Ghidorah. There's a CGI Godzilla again. Doesn't look as terrible as the CGI Godzilla in the last two movies, but um Still doesn't quite hold up. Razorback says, imagine being eight, having never seen an action movie before. Then you watch this. Yeah, I could I could see how this movie would blow minds as an eight year old. Amazing that King Ghidorah doesn't drown. Like, he knew the job was dangerous when he took it. Now get to safety, stay low, and do not touch military equipment again. <laughs>
Oh, okay. <laughs> so, is he... So, with so much happening, like Godzilla wiping out nearly all the self-defense forces, is he the one who's now in charge on the field? I should probably stop making up these funny scenarios for a movie as serious as this, but it would be funny if that whole time they were prepping the subs, they go down and just see that Godzilla's already killed Ghidorah. It's like, oh... You know, if I was given carte blanche to go anywhere... And um, and cover this story. I would not want to go to the bridge. Because uh, I would want to go somewhere where I'm on solid land. But I can still get a good view of everything that's happening. Oh, uh, Razor Bike. Uh, we'll we'll get to that part uh, with the end of the movie because the end is as much as as great as this movie is. The ending's rather confusing, and it really is one of those really that's what you did moments. Wait, the old man survived? See, look, look. Okay, I want you to mime... I'm, we're going to put you in front of this blue screen. I want you to mime losing your balance before falling over off the bridge. <laughs> Okay, here's another um, problem that the dub titles had. And I say had because the Blu-ray... It was a problem on the DVD, but the Blu-rays rectified this thing. Um, the dub... So there's a point coming up um, that, that really added to the confusion. There, there's a point coming up with uh, that really added to the confusion on why Ghidorah was treated as a good guy in this movie and Godzilla was the bad guy in this scenario. So they're shooting that missile or that torpedo at Godzilla's wound. Godzilla's smart enough to see it coming and then uses Ghidorah as a shield. Um, <laughs> uh, when Ghidorah's accidentally hit, the dub uh, has uh, Admiral Tachibana 
um, saying good, and then the other guy going excellent uh, when they're not actually saying that. Uh, Godzilla totally grabbed that submarine. But yeah, um, but yeah, they did change the fact that um, Admiral Tachibana said good. But uh, in the Blu-ray, they changed it to where uh, that guy just basically dropped the F-bomb. I'm like, okay, y'all fixed it, but you didn't have to fix it to that extreme. Whatever. I mean, whatever. The dub, I would love to get um, to somehow get proper English subtitle. Like, this movie would really... What needs to happen... Um, I know people have been saying um, Criterion should re uh, release the Heisei series and even the Millennium series on Blu-ray, but what I'd rather see is Toho make a collaboration with uh, Shout Factory or Scream Factory since they're pretty much the Criterion collection for horror and science fiction. And um, we get some proper English subtitles for these movies. Uh, and, and probably more, and probably better Blu ray transfers, especially for GMK. That's what I'd like to see. It probably won't happen, but um, the chances of Shout Factory uh, handling this movie would be. Uh, would make a lot more sense than um, Criterion. Because Criterion, again, they're more about, like, film history and preserving, like, and preservation. And the Showa series, whether it's your favorite uh, series or not, it's probably the most important. The Heisei and Millennium series probably be more suited for Shout Factory. And... I have no doubt Shout Factory would do an awesome job, uh, especially considering that their Scream Factory division made that awesome Halloween box set, and they're about to come out with that uh, Friday the 13th box set. Oh, well, you know, Ghidorah finally, uh, finally has his gravity beaten. So. His tails aren't moving. Yeah, unfortunately, like, it's kind of sad that, um, that Ghidorah's gravity beams don't do anything to Godzilla. They just power him up. Yeah, there goes Ghidorah. Yeah, Ghidorah probably put up the biggest fight, but even then, um, didn't really work out in the end. Although now the Guardian Monsters have another trick up their sleeves, huh? Yeah. And once again, watching this movie out of context, um, like seeing Baragon, Mothra, and Ghidorah show up in this, um, in that little fireball, huh? and then they go into Godzilla. Like, again, watching this out of context, I thought that they were giving Godzilla new life and new energy. Um, but no, they're just drowning him now.
Yeah, they're drowning Godzilla to um, give Tachibana another shot. Huh? <laughs> that's a that's a neat visual gag where Godzilla just burps Godzilla part 9 Godzilla goes to hell oh is that that like a terrible movie where Godzilla's killed at the beginning, and all of a sudden we realize that he's been this psychic hell worm. God, that was... It, Friday th like, the Friday the 13th movies are stupid anyway. But uh, that decision is just so ridiculous. Like, make Jason's... Like, Jason's no longer some dis disfigured kid that drowned in a lake. He's now... He's some psychic worm. You know, that's a strong-ass submarine um, to survive getting swallowed by Godzilla. Oh, yeah, this this part here... Like, it, it kind of reminds me of Iron Man, where... Like, it's, it's a great movie, but the ending is just kind of... The ending and the conclusion is just kind of underwhelming. Razorbike says, let's be honest, the best Friday movie is part six. Yes. Yes, that I can get behind. And not only that, it's the only Friday the 13th movie that you can actually say is good. Because not most the Friday the 13th series is not known for quality, but if there's one movie that you could say is good, it would be Jason Lives. Yeah, that in that position, like I would be doing what they were doing and just kind of accepting my fate. But uh, yeah, this confuses me right here. Yeah, Godzilla has a lot of like death stares in this movie, like he where he just looks pure evil. Hey, made it out. Huh? Yeah, why would... You know, for Godzilla uh, being smart enough to detect that torpedo and use Ghidorah as a shield, he sure as hell wasn't smart enough to stop using his atomic breath when he realized that it was coming out of his shoulder. Yeah, that's, yeah, the music in this movie, um, by Kawatani. Yeah, 
But yeah, it's such a great score. But yeah, again, like the ending with how Godzilla's taken out, it's you again, it's like Iron Man with the big final battle where you're like, huh, that's it? Well, still, that was a good movie. I think that she is a weird character because, like, she doesn't do a whole lot. But they're supposed to, like, establish some sort of romantic connection between her and the Admiral. That is creepy. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of serious, like... There's seriously a lot of fantasy elements here. James Bond 007 says, I wonder if Doherty took inspiration from this film when he made King of the Monsters. Uh, if he did, then that would be the second instance where an American Godzilla movie is inspired by a Shutsuke Kaneko monster film. Because, because the structure of um, the plot with the monsters and the overall structure of Gareth Edwards' Godzilla is very similar to um, Guardian of the Universe. So yeah, as much as like the ending, uh, the way they defeat Godzilla is... Um, like as much as, as weird as the ending... <clears throat> As weird as the way they take Godzilla out is, the last shot in the movie is pretty creepy. It took me a while on my first viewing to realize what that was. I'm like, oh, that's Godzilla's heart. Yeah, that's haunting. But it's appropriate that Ifa Kube's theme comes in for that moment. And that one, I don't even think that, um, unlike uh, the post credit scene in Megaguirus, I don't even think that was meant to be like a cliffhanger for a sequel. I think that's just, I think that's more of like a metaphorical ending. Like Godzilla vs. Destroya, where Godzilla will live on. Yeah, that was um yeah, great movie. And uh I got to be honest though, like I think this um I actually think I like Kaneko's Gamera films above GMK. Yeah? Uh maybe because those movies have the advantage of Gamera never really being truly appreciated up until those movies. So that's why I give Shutsuke Kaneko credit for making Gamera cool. 
Uh, but this is still good. This is still really good. Uh, so yeah, next uh, uh, Thursday, uh, I, men I mentioned last week that this week we'll be doing the two best films of the Millennium Series. So Thursday will be Godzilla against Mechagodzilla. Uh, the movie where Masaki Tezuka is given a second chance to properly do a Godzilla movie. Uh, yeah, once again, thank you guys for tuning into this watch along. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, uh, for those of you who are watching it in post, uh, I encourage you to watch these live because I encourage uh, interaction from the chat. I would probably imagine when I get to the legendary films and Shin Godzilla that I might get a bigger audience uh, since uh, those movies seem to be more accessible and more appreciated by those who aren't Godzilla fans, or at least... At least in terms of the MonsterVerse films, um, they're American films, so they're more accessible. But um, Shin Godzilla definitely got more appreciation. I was surprised at how much appreciation Shin Godzilla got uh, from American audiences. But yeah, uh, yeah. The, uh, Thursday will be Godzilla against Mechagodzilla. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in, and if you really like what I'm doing with the channel you want to help support financially, you could go over to patreon.com forward slash the real Mr. Robinson. For $1 a month, you'll be able to get access to exclusive watch-alongs uh, that no one else gets to see. Uh, once we hit 25 subscribe, once we once I hit 25 patrons, we will be able to do uh, exclusive watch-alongs for you guys. Okay, Godzilla's played by Mizuho Yoshida. Uh, that cr the credits came up too quickly, but yeah, um, but yeah. Uh, right now, if you just pledge one dollar a month, you'll help support the channel financially. But once we get to twenty five patrons, I will start doing watch alongs exclusive for you guys. Uh, uh, but if you can't support the channel financially, that's totally fine. Just subscribing on YouTube and. Uh, Helping me bring in those views uh, is all that I need. And uh, yeah, uh, Thursday will be Godzilla against Mechagodzilla. Until then, this is the real Mr. Robinson telling you there's only one. <laughs>